Good evening. It's about 1020. This game just ended. If you just saw it, my goodness, what a way it ended. Aaron Donald, three sacks on the night against the Cardinals. Um, Rams beat the Cardinals, and now guess who's back at first? Those Packers of Green Bay who beat the Bears. Aaron Rodgers still owns the Bears. I, I was a little bit worried at first because, I mean, the Bears were actually getting stuff going. You know, they got like a kick return touchdown against the Pack. I mean, things were going smoothly for them at first, but then, you know, the Bears are the Bears, and, you know, I mean, Rodgers and company just torched them. I mean, just Fields came back, but again, you know, Aaron Rodgers did what he does best, and that is throw the ball to Devontae Adams, throw the ball to all those receivers and stuff like that, just get the big plays when you need the big plays. Four TDs for Aaron Rodgers on Sunday night. Now, this game that I just finished here, um, Rams, Cardinals. I don't know what kind of game the Cardinals were thinking this was, but this was not this was not the game to be squandering with mismanaged plays. We're talking multiple opportunities to take points. And the Cardinals went for it twice. They went for it twice, and one of them in which Aaron Donald already had stopped. You know, James Conner on one fourth down play. It was like fourth and one, and it was like a long one yard. And, you know, they just did the most basic fourth down play, which is run right up the gut. And that never works. <laughs> we gotta we gotta we gotta stop with these analytics type plays. Because I don't know what Cliff Kingsbury company were thinking, you know. You need the points. You can't you can't let things like this happen. I mean, it's cool. They got the onside kick, you know. But the cards they, there was just too there was just too little time. It's too little, too late. And the Rams now they've evened up their um they've evened it up with the cards, you know. One to one. We'll see if we get a round three, because I mean I I'm I'm beyond excited if we get a round three for this. Um, Rams, Cardinals, you know, that, that'd be great. Um, I mean, the Rams were even down players tonight. They were down players. COVID, there's players all over the NFL. I'm not even going to go over all of them that have COVID because, I mean, there's just way too many that have COVID. Um, so, yeah, why don't, we get, why don't we go back a little bit in which I, I, I thought, you know, Thursday night, I, I, I did not watch this game on Thursday night, and how predictable it was. Steelers got whipped until they came back against the Vikings because this is the Vikings we're talking about here. Like, score says 36-28, but I mean, honestly, you know, the Steelers came back. You know, it was all it was basically over by halftime. It was like 29 to seven at halftime, and then you know, obviously, the Steelers tried to mount a comeback, but that failed miserably. So well, now the Vikings are back into it. You know, in the playoff race with with a victory there, they needed that. They needed that victory. If they didn't get that victory, I, I would have been worried about them. We would have. I mean, I, like the Vikings, they they needed they needed something desperately, and they got it. Um, the Falcons are back in the playoff race. Like they picked off Cam Newton so bad that he got benched again. You know, it was a pick six, by the way. He picked them off so bad that there was a. Uh, I mean, I mean, I, I don't know about the Panthers. Like they've gone on a downward spiral at this point. Uh, Saints and the Seahawks get big victories. Saints beat the Jets, beat them up pretty badly. Seahawks beat up the Texans pretty badly. You know, it is what it is. There, um, the Titans shut out the Jags. You know, the Titans been injured to hell and back too. That's, you know, that was a game that happened. You know, unfortunately, you know, Urban Meyer is still, you know, he's he, he's definitely not the fit. He might be gone after this season, you know. Uh, I'm surprised he isn't gone yet because, I mean, the way the media has been portraying this man, you know, it has not been a good look. Not been a good look at all. Um, now, the Raiders, the Las Vegas Raiders, they needed this victory. I, I'm, I was considering, you know, watching this game for a second and then what happened was a beating you know Josh Jacob fumble early in this game you know 
you shouldn't be dancing on the team's you know logo on midfield. You shouldn't you shouldn't do that. And the Raiders paid the price for it. Patrick Mahomes owns the Raiders just like Aaron Rodgers owns the Bears. It's it's pretty it's pretty tragic at this point because I mean again once again the Raiders had all the momentum in the world. They had all the momentum coming out of Thanksgiving, beating the Cowboys. And what happens? What happens? They fail to get big victories when they need them. It's it's really, really sad. They got blown out by the Chiefs. Um, the Browns, on the other hand, now Lamar Jackson got injured in this game. It's I believe he's day-to-day, -day actually. You know, so it wasn't that bad of an injury, but it could have been really, really bad. You know, high ankle sprites can get really, really bad if it does, you know, if it ever happens to you. You know, so the Browns, they barely hang on. Like Tyler Huntley let this come back for the Ravens. You got to be kidding me, man. You got to be kidding me, you know. Because we, we, the Browns were winning this game by 18. You know, 15 heading into the fourth quarter. You know, I mean, I, I just don't know. Like, I just don't know. Like, they're going to have to step it up a little bit because, you know, this is not what you want right here. You know, an injured Lamar Jackson, that is prime opportunity to take advantage. Now, oh my goodness, we got, we, 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 I mean, the Raiders, the Browns are just pretty disappointing all around. But, I mean, hey, the Browns are, what, 500 now? You know, oh, actually, they're seven and six. Excuse me, not five hundred. They're seven and six. Um, so, you know, obviously, the Browns needed this victory. Ravens, on the other hand, you know that that is a tough loss. You know, losing Lamar Jackson in this game was a tough loss. Um, it is what it is. Um, so, you know, hopefully, you know, up, you know, at least the Ravens still have the division lead. That that's the good thing, right? Right, Ravens fans? That's a good thing. Oh, dear Lord. My Dallas Cowboys. How about my Dallas Cowboys? Defense, once again, <laughs> saved this team. Because I don't know what in the world Dak was doing out there. I, like, I really don't. Two bad interceptions in this game by Dak. You're, we are lucky for Micah Parsons. Mans is playing lights out this year. Forced a couple fumbles. I mean, this is—I mean, this man has just been on point all season long. Got two sacks as well, just on point all season long. And I'm not sure, you know, what in the world Washington was thinking. You know, trying to come back at this game because I mean, I, I did not want to do that. But here we are, you know, because I mean, the Cowboys' offense, you know, at times this year, this is another example where. I don't know what kind of play calling they're doing. I don't know what Kellen Moore is doing. I don't know what Mike McCarthy's doing. It's not the play calling that you should be doing. You know, the, the type. These are the types of play calls that aren't going to get us in. They're not going to get the Cowboys very far. You know, if if they they can't get their their um, what's the phrase? You can't let your foot off the gas. You know, stay on the pedal, pedal to the metal, and you know the Cowboys. It, they still have the division lead. They're still leading it by three games. Not too much to worry about right now. Cowboys should clinch a playoff spot next week. They might clinch the division next week too because there's only four weeks left in the season. Now, um, not that I, I said might, but I believe there's some. Um, yeah, there is a division game. Actually, both games next week in the NFC East involve division games, so not just yet. So, unless some crazy things happen, but, you know, keep an eye on this Cowboys offense. It's been kind of anemic at times. Um, Chargers, oh my goodness, they didn't have to do the Giants like that, you know. They did not have to do the Giants like that. Mike Glennon ended up getting the start for the Giants, you know, and unfortunately, unfortunately, Justin Herbert was just too much. Too much. You know, you know the receivers is going to be, you know, doing good. Well, actually, they were, they were down Keenan Allen, so you know, Jalen Guyton still putting up numbers, you know. I mean, I mean, this Chargers team is getting to that potential that they should have been at the entire season, because, I mean, uh, some of these losses by the Chargers have been kind of inexplicable. 
but I'm glad that they got it together against the Giant. That's, I mean, that, that's definitely a victory that you want. They blew them out for most of this game until the Giants obviously, you know, tried to get some garbage time points in, and it was what it was there. Sadly, um, this week we learned that Marius Thomas had passed away, and um, the best way to tribute DT was put put his number on the field and blow out the Lions. That's exactly what the Broncos did. They it, it, obviously an emotional game. You know, I hope Marius Thomas is you know resting somewhere peaceful, man, because that. Uh, uh, that came completely out of nowhere last week. It came completely out of nowhere that he had, you know, passed away. And, you know, I believe the Lions are close to getting eliminated. I know that, I think the Jags are eliminated for playoff contention, if I'm not mistaken. I think the Lions might be close too. I'm not sure. I'll have to double check, you know, again, because I, I, I forget stuff all the time when it comes to these playoffs, you know. So you know, we still got a long way to go, you know. And if you watch these two games late yesterday, you know, to round this video out, 49ers Bengals, in which I thought for a second, you know, I really thought for a second that, you know, the 49ers were going to run away with this one, but then the Bengals, oh my goodness, T. Higgins, Jamar Chase, they finally woke up in the fourth quarter and Burrow was completing passes to him left and right. And then, you know, we got the overtime somehow. I, I, I was perplexed. At this game, I was really perplexed. You know, Jimmy Garoppolo's playing well. You know, too. I mean, everything seemed to be going well for the 49ers, but then their defense decided to play dead. You know, and the Bengals were able to come back into this game. They got a field goal in in overtime, and then Brandon Ayuk with a magnificent play in overtime, a magnificent touchdown. Ma we're talking magnificent. I mean. They couldn't stop George Kittle either, you know, the Bengals couldn't. They couldn't stop him at all. He had 150 yards on 13 catches, or rather 151. I'm looking at the stat line right now, you know, because uh, I, I forgot to look at it yesterday. But, I mean, my goodness, my goodness, man. What a game that was. Shades of those Super Bowls, man. Shades of those Super Bowls, which the 49ers snuck by again. They're in a good position right now, not that they have, you know, the advantage over the Washington football team. Washington football team still technically in the seventh seed position right now. So everything is fine. Everything is fine for the 49ers. They just got to keep winning. And then last but not least, guess who also still owns the team? Tom Brady. Tom Brady owns the Buffalo Bills. And the Buffalo Bills, they played horrible for most of this game. Like, it was 24-3 to at halftime. It was that bad. I don't know where the Bills came from in the second half. You know, obviously, Josh Allen had, had 400 yards by himself. You know, but this is Tom Brady we're talking about here. And you don't, you don't give Tom Brady these types of games in overtime like this. You know, because, I mean, you know, Tom Brady was going to Godwin and Evans and Gronk all day. But Rashad Perriman? Yeah, I, I, I did. Uh, I, I, apparently, he had no catches all season coming in, and that huge touchdown led the Bucks to a victory. Now, I am. A, uh, I think we've been concerned all season about the Bucks defense at times, and this is another example of it. You know, because I mean, you you can't allow this type of performance in the fourth quarter by, well, most of the second half anyway, by the Bills, but. You know, because, I mean, I thought this game was over. I really thought it was. It was 27-10, you know. I was like, maybe the maybe the Bills are mounting to come back. Because, I mean, once it was, once it was like 24-3, I was like, okay, I'm going to turn this off. And then I'm going to do something else. You know, I think I watched the Grey Cup. So, if you watch the Grey Cup, I'm not going to talk about the CFL on this channel at all. But I just wanted to mention the Grey Cup real quick. Because I did watch that last night. And that was a good-ass game also last night. But, yeah, I was perplexed that the Bills came back. Perplexed that they tried to come back and win this game when you know Tom Brady owns you. And, you know, you can't falter it overtime either. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta strike when the iron is hot. 
against Tom Brady and you know the Bills continue to falter you know now now things are looking kind of rough for them they're a little bit behind now in the AFC a little bit behind on the eight ball now you know there's not a lot of time left and as I look here at the conferences and the standings of each of the divisions again the Bills are two games behind the Patriots right now of course you know, the Dolphins are gaining too so you gotta be careful about the Dolphins too now Bills fans you know in the West it's still very very tight Raiders you know they're in a weird position because you know again it's the Raiders Broncos now they're putting themselves in a position where they could get some momentum getting to the playoffs too. AFC North is still a log jam as well, you know, because I mean I, I just don't know what the AFC North is going to look like. Like somebody's going to get left out again this year from the AFC. I think I think that's going to happen. You know, it's a shame because the NFC is looking like uh, we'll talk about we'll talk about that when we get there. Um, but it's it's really a shame because I mean there's just a lot of there's a lot of good kind of inconsistent teams in the AFC North. You know, the Ravens have, you know, been at heart attack central all season long. The Browns are going back to be the Browns of, you know, the old and then they're switching in between that and the Browns of 2020 and 2021. You know, the, you know, or rather the Browns of 2020, not 2021. The Browns of 2020 that were a good team in 2020. You know, they're switching back in between being inconsistent. The Steelers, they're inconsistent. They really, they're really fading at, at the wrong time. And then the AFC South is a two-team race, which the Colts are gaining on the Titans. Titans, you know, are inching the hell and back, remember. And there, there's still plenty of time with four weeks left. And then you look at the NFC. It's just a mess. It is a mess. Like, the Cowboys and the Washington football team, you know, and also the Eagles now. The Eagles are gaining, but remember, the Cowboys do have a three-game lead. So that, that again, as a Cowboys fan, I'll be a little biased here. That is actually a good thing. Uh, I really hate it, but it's a good thing. It's a really good thing here, you know? Uh, it's a shame that we're not going to be able to clinch the division next week, probably, because the Eagles and Washington are playing each other. So I don't know how that's going to work. Then the NFC West, thanks to the Rams beating the the Cardinals tonight, you know, now the Rams are gaining on the cards, so the cards can't slip this up, you know, you, you, there's it's just a one game difference between you being on the road or being at home, you know, not even getting, not even talk about first round by because you, you don't have that anymore because you lost, but there, there's a huge difference between hosting a game the first round and you know, going on the roads. The Cardinals better be careful. They got it. They got to correct these inconsistencies that they've had because they've had trouble at home this season for whatever reason. I don't know why. Uh, but they're perfect on the road, though. So I guess road warriors. Uh huh. Um, and then the 49ers are also gaining. But maybe don't count out the Seahawks just yet. I thought I was going to count them out. You know, a couple weeks ago. I know I said a couple weeks ago that I was going to count them out. But I mean, uh, they're, they're gaining, you know. They get, they got, they got some victories at the right time. You know, Russell Wilson's back at the right time. It seems, so better be careful. Better be careful. The AFC North. It looks like the Packers are about to clinch it. I believe the Packers also have clinched the playoff spot. If I'm not mistaken. And maybe the Bucks as well. I'm not sure, but the Vikings are really the only team that can. Otherwise, get a playoff spot from here in the north. Um, not sure how that's going to work out because I mean, again, it's a log jam of six and seven teams at the NFC right now. Uh, too many six and seven teams in the NFC, which makes the next four weeks very, very intriguing. And then you got the NFC South, like the Falcons. You know, they again, I don't know how they got this victory against the Panthers. And then the Saints, you know, they're struggling right now. You know, but they got again. They got the victory they needed to try and stay on track. But they're injured to hell and back as well. I mean, it is what it is. So that is going to do it here. Um, again, we'll, we'll see what next week looks like real quick here before we go. Because I mean, you got a game on Thursday. You got a couple games on Saturday. One of them I'm not gonna watch. I know I'm not gonna watch it. 
and then the Sunday slate is just wide open. It is a wide open slate of games. Oh boy. Oh boy. My goodness. Except for that Sunday night and Monday night game, though. That is not that is not okay. I don't know who decided that. Um But yeah. Yeah, that that's pretty much gonna do it here, man. I, I cannot wait for uh, her video on Thursday, which we'll talk about week fifteen. And for all of y'all, I hope y'all continue to subscribe. Let's get to hundred. Let's get maybe get let's maybe get to one hundred sixty before the year runs out. You know, Father Time is not being kind. You know, to me at this moment. You know, because I need I need some dough, and I did not have it. But you know, uh, that that's a different story for another time. Uh, continue to check out the channel throughout the week. We'll be updating throughout the week with some more content because I think I want some other things planned here. I might have planned some other things here on the channel to, real quick for the week. Uh, but otherwise, normal schedule and everything like that. You'll see a video tomorrow that I recorded earlier today. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, and for all of y'all that do watch the NFL recaps, because again, my, my reactions to things are crazy when it comes to the NFL, because I, I, I cannot process how crazy the NFL is each and every week. So with all that being said, I'm going to get on out of here and see you guys on Thursday with the week 15 preview and my predictions not really like score predictions or anything i said predictions not score predictions good night everybody